show that you worked on way back called Girls Bravo. I did? Yes, actually. <laughs> oh, wow, you forgot. No, most people that worked on that show seem to remember it. Girls Bravo? Yes. What was it for? You, well, who, who else was on it? Um, I remember Liam O'Brien was on it. Uh-huh. And Patrick Seitz was on it. You sure it wasn't the other Tara? There's a few Taras. No, there, no, been Tara was, Platt? I, I, at least in my understanding of it, 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 you were there just under a pseudonym. But I guess it was that long ago. I think it was a, I think it was a different Tara. Really? Oh. Huh. I think so. Okay. Either that or you went to go back through your Wikipedia again, you know? <laughs> but so, see, this is the thing, like, Wikipedia is awesome for a lot of things, but Wikipedia does get things wrong. Yes. So I should fix it if it's on there, because that I, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. usually at least remember the title, and that, but you yeah. stumped me on that. So you're saying it's and a role that you The three Tara's, yeah. and people do get, like, I was given Tara Strong's schedule today when I came and checked in. <laughs> so it happens. <laughs> Because I, I got the right envelope, but the, so she probably has my schedule and I have her. So <laughs> if we're in the wrong place, that's why. But it and happens. Tara Platt were here too. I know <laughs> we went to do the trifecta of the Terras. <laughs> if we had Tara Reed, then we'd Tara have four. Reed, we would. And be... look, they're good people to get <laughs> confused with. <laughs> if I didn't like them or they weren't really super incredibly talented, it might be offensive. But those girls are awesome, so I'm ha I'm happy to be confused with them any day. <laughs> And you're both Tara S, so that kind of like adds on to it. I know. So it confuses everybody. Do you guys know each Tara other? Tara Platt just got a check of mine in the mail. Really? We, <laughs> yeah, no, no. This is so really? So even the union messed up because we had worked on the same show and she got my check. And so this is not the first time this has happened. So she forwards me my mail now. So Tara and Yuri forward my mail to me. At least she's forwarding it. Well, that's what I said. I'm like, thank you for me. It was like for three. It was honestly for $3 um, because it was like an old looping job. But yeah, so that's, I mean, that's how funny it is. Like that, that's why I'm pretty sure it was probably her on that show. <laughs> so with something like that, so if you're, do you still get residuals? Is that what you're talking about? Uncert or? Only on cert very few projects, to be honest. Um, I don't remember what that was, but on, like Generator Rex we do, anything like Scooby-Doo we do. Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo we do. Scooby-Doo Ice Age, things like that. That's yeah. really cool. And a lot of times they're for like, less than the amount of the stamp that they were sent in. Like, but it's all checks, so. It's a, like, I've gotten checks for zero cents. And I'm like, what, do I, what do I do with it? Or like, even for like 20 cents, and I'm like, shit, you put a 30 cent whatever something stamp on this. Like, it's weird math. But yeah, so that's, that's our life. That's what we, <laughs> it's boring, sorry. No, no, I think, I think it's funny. It's a weird life. So do you come to a lot of these conventions? I started conventions less than a year ago, um, but I probably, I think this is maybe like my 10th, and I love it because I don't get to meet you guys otherwise, and it's so cool, Pe like questions about Generator Rex and shows that are really dear to me that I don't get to talk about anymore. Um, you know, people brought me some stuff to sign this morning, shows that, I like, you know, you just see the cover and you get really nostalgic, and, and you're, it's so cool that they live on because you guys are watching them, and with technology, that's just easier and easier. It, it didn't, you, you just have to have get a VHS tape of a lot of, I have VHS copies of most of the shows I worked on. And my grandmother luckily has a VCR, so if I really want to watch them, I can go I there. Yeah, but no, it's awesome that you guys are watching the old stuff, and Netflix is bringing back stuff, and so the conventions are just an amazing way to, to relive a lot of this. So if you weren't here as a special guest, would you come and cosplay at a convention like oh this? Oh my gosh. My thing is, my two things that I would be into, like if I was gonna cosplay, I'm a Harry Potter dork and an orphan black super fan. Like I would freak out. Like I'd want to dress as one of the clones. I don't know which one. Do you guys watch Orphan Black or no? Yes, but I haven't seen one. I won't say anything. No spoilers. I won't say anything. But that's who I would cosplay as, as one of the orphan black girls. Because there's a lot of them. That's awesome. Oh, yes, sir. The new thing you're in, um, Gundam Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on that on that little production? Well, I have not seen the finished. It's not. Oh, it I comes see. out July fifth. Mm -hmm. I loved working on that. Um, Gund Gundam Thunderbolt comes out. I guess yeah, July fifth. I'm almost positive. And um, stars Johnny Young Bosch yeah. and Sharon Lee and Stephanie Shea directed it. And it was stylistically very different than anything like Pokemon, where it was high energy and goofy and silly. Gundam Thunderbolt was really... Grim dark. Grim dark and just <laughs> a, 
completely different um, stylistically. I'm, I'm curious to see it because Stephanie kept telling me to like bring the performance down and um, she's like very real and she was like, just just say it, just say it. Like, so I'm curious to see how it all plays because it was oh, yeah. a big change for I, me. I'm eager to see it too. It, yeah, what I heard of it did sound really good. Yeah, the, the, clip, show the itself, clips are good. The show itself visually is pretty is beautiful. Yeah, I'm excited to see the whole thing. They only got a few us, more days. I huh? haven't even, I mean, I don't even get to see the whole script when I'm working on it. So for me, I'm kind of like, Stephanie will tell me my character's line, like storyline, but I didn't get to read a full script. So I have really no idea. So it'll be just as fun for me. Although I don't watch a lot of what I'm in because I just start cringing. You know, a lot of voice actors love watching themselves. I'm like, why did I say it like that? Ew. So we'll see if I watch it. Is there any stuff that you will watch yourself in? Not much. No? Not well, live stuff? I do just so I can talk about it, but I, I don't like what I'm a weird actor that way. I know a lot of actors do this so they can watch themselves. Um, I hosted a show called Fridays on Cartoon Network years ago, and that was fun to watch. Fridays! Oh, yeah, I remember that. Cartoon Network. You're making me cry. Um, that was fun to watch because I had a co host on that. And the interviews were fun to watch because I like to see how they spliced it. But when you're watching, like all I can think of is like, oh, why did I say it like that? Oh, my hair looks weird. Or like, it's hard to just take yourself out of the equation when you're watching yourself. But that was a show I could actually watch because Tommy was so funny. <laughs> Remember Tommy? Yeah. Tommy. How long did you get to work on that show? Two, we did that show for, there was another host, but then I worked on it for about two years. And then the show got canceled and we got replaced by like an eight-year-old boy. So, oh. you know, you can't complain when it's an eight-year-old boy. No, you can't. Yeah. No, he was cute. So what's it like getting to do so many dubs? Is that a good word for it? Like, you're yeah. dubbing things into English. Is it difficult when it's in another language initially? Uh, yes and no. Like, in some ways it's great because you have the original, the, the original Japanese to go by, or sometimes I've dubbed French shows too. So you have the original as like a, a blueprint so you're like oh this is said super high energy this is she's really sad here so you have that blueprint but then you you still want to make it your own but you don't want to upset fans who really love the original so there's whereas when I do original animation like generator Rex they had nothing to compare it to I could just bring myself to it and and plus with a dub you're worried about the voice black and matching it so what you want to say might really take seven more syllables just to really get the right thing. And it's frustrating because we just want to do a good job for you guys. And so sometimes that's, that's harder. The dub, I think, is harder because you're, there's all these constraints. And you want to be true to the original, true to yourself, <laughs> true to the fans, and true to the flap. So for these characters that you did for Pokemon, mm -hmm. did you hear the initial voices first and they were like, okay, try to do the best you can emulating it, or did you get to go your own route? With the ones, most of the ones I did, we stuck to the original, the tone of the original. So like Bulbasaur, I always tell the story. So, I don't know what this is. I should know how to use a mic by now. Um, Bulbasaur's a name in Japanese was long, but they, he all, only said, Dane, 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 which is two syllables. Bulbasaur's three oh, syllables. Wow. Hi. Hey, man. Hey, man. Come on in. <laughs> That was a cute look at. Um, what's up? Come back. Uh, so to say Bulbasaur with three syllables, we really had to, that's why sometimes I'm like just saying Bulba, 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 just to match. But, and, or sometimes it was just one syllable, so it would be like, like, but he would still be grinding his teeth, so you'd have to like keep it going as long as you could. Um, so, but, but vocally, we kept it the same as much as we could and then once we sort of owned it then that's like like it's like when you watch really early episodes of the simpsons and they all sound completely different you kind of grow into these characters and they sort of become your own so i'm sure if you watched me as mokuba in episode one I'm, i probably do sound slightly different because it just you ease into it and then you wish you could go back and redub those early episodes with the voice that you found and own um, so, so that the Japanese. So we would follow the Japanese for tone for the most part, and then kind of the syllables would dictate the rest. Did you have a favorite voice that you did get to do for Pokemon? I would love to say it's Bulbasaur because he is number one, and he is so cute. Um, but that really hurt my throat because I mean it's all day. Yeah, 
So like, I really liked doing Oddish because Oddish was really easy on my throat and I thought he was really cute. But like, when I talk to people who play the game and do the cards, they're like, Oddish isn't very good. You know, or like he wasn't like useful. And I was like, nobody's so sweet and so cute. Like, I get really, like I, I, yeah, I take it really personally. No, I'm just kidding. But his voice was this Oddish, Odd, 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 Oddish. And like, I could do that all day and not, it wouldn't hurt. And he never got crazy. Like, he never saw, like, he never screamed really. <laughs> so it was really nice on my chords, which is a weird reason to like him, but. No, that makes plenty of sense. Yes. That makes and he's sense. super cute. <laughs> and that makes sense also. Yeah, and you want to just like plant him in the ground. <laughs> See like what grows, don't you? Like don't you just want to put that little oddish yeah. like in a, in a planter and like have an oddish tree? Oh, Let's get on that. an oddish tree. Okay. But it'll only grow into a gloom and that smells bad. I know, I mean and gloom is fine, but I want an oddish tree. If I'm going to be honest. So these voices that I just heard you make now, oh, have, have you always been making these these crazy voices. I mean, that's pretty impressive that you well, can do that. Thank you. I was a sing I mean, and you'll probably a lot of the voice actors you talk to were singers at some point who did funny voices for their families to entertain them. So I was always just doing weird stuff. I would imitate commercials all the time. My first sentence, I think, was that there was an Avon commercial like way back in the day, and I and this the Avon tag was "You never looked so good," and as a little kid, I would just say that to people. So people loved me. Yeah. It was very popular. I was a should. very popular little girl. Um, but yeah, I was always just repeating and imitating. And I'm not. A, I'm not a good mimic. Like you'll meet, you know, impressionists who are amazing. I was. I'm not good at that. But I would just do funny things with my voice and just try to make people laugh. But you know, mimicking something totally different. That's like. I know, mean, that is a skill and... that I wish. Is anyone here a good impressionist? I, I mean, like everyone must have a Shatner impression in them, don't you? Any good Shatners we can see? He's here this weekend, I mean, so it's here, relevant. So I feel like. Anybody? No, no good Shatners? Oh, come on. All right, Dang. come on. What, what about Pikachus? Can you guys do a Pikachu for me? Pikachu! I knew it! How about a Bulbasaur? Let me hear a Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. <laughs> I love doing that. All right, what else we got? Um, I can try Shatner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me hear some Shatner. Yeah, it's the pauses. Uh, acting is special. <laughs> that it flows with spaces. That was pretty damn good. Was that your first Shatner? Yeah, I, I love to just do voices in general. Awesome. In whatever show or movie or video game. And he's in this, he's especially fun because of the weird pauses. Yeah. Same with like Christopher Walken. I was just gonna say there's a, a fine line between like the pauses with Walken and the pauses with Shatner. All right, any Walkins? Any Walkins? It's the <laughs> He goes up at the end. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> That's good. Not bad at all. I so wish I could do impressions. No, I'm. S I can't do them either. Can not join us under Dull Ante? <laughs> that was that wasn't actually Christopher Walken, but that was that was a voice that was just uh, that was just mimicking him. That's good. A different game. Well, because a lot of those voices become. I mean, even with our shows, like become caricatures of themselves. Like you guys have seen, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, probably. Yes. Yeah. Right. So like they become a caricature of the voices, and that's that's so much more fun even than the original voices. Like it just takes it to a whole other crazy level. But yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. People, I think, are afraid sometimes to ask me if I've seen it because they think like, are you offended by it? Oh, no, it's hilarious! <laughs> I only know of one person on, on Yu -Gi -Oh, that, that was on Yu -Gi Oh that's offended by it. Who's that? Oh, um, Eric Stewart. I... He's not offended, he's just being silly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, all the talking with Eric. It, it's, it, it's actually really well known that you don't talk to him about Yu Gi Oh Bridge. It, uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was with him last weekend, I'm not afraid. <laughs> no, you have to have a sense of humor about that stuff, because. Yeah. I'm just saying that's I mean, I'm we have ridiculous, silly jobs. Let's be honest. Like, I talk funny all day. I can't take myself too serious. <laughs> no, you get paid for it. It's an, oh, and it's the best it. job in the world. But I, if I took myself seriously, everyone would hate me, and I would hate me. So, not time for that. And how did you get into this industry? Uh, I was, a, I was like, when I was in high school, I started going on auditions. I was singing and doing theater in New York and stuff like that, and. A voiceover was one of the auditions I went on, and it was, I tell the story a lot, so I'm sorry if you're bored. Uh, it was for Wart Cream, 
and I said something like, ew, gross, it work. And I got the job, and I was like, this is a job? Like, no way. And my mom's like, that's a job? You should, like, really? Like, you could, someone's gonna pay you to do that? So she was thrilled, because it helped with college and stuff, so. I just sort of got into it. Pokemon was a, was the first anime I ever did, um, which is incredibly lucky. And I don't even know how I got that audition. Like I've never been able to thank the right person for referring me. And Bulbasaur just happened to be in the. I was dubbing a, a human voice, and Bulbasaur just happened to be in that episode. So they said, "Try that." I, I mean, what's luckier than that? So, yeah, no, that's absolutely right incredible. place, right time. Need to be number one. And what is the process like actually going in and recording a voiceover? Well, for anime, it's obviously very different. And I was super lucky because I didn't know how to dub at all. The first day I went in, I see Veronica Taylor recording. And that's intimidating and amazing. <laughs> and she's here. I have to go find her. And But luckily, I was a little early and got to see what was going on because recording to pictures is, is a whole different process. So. And anime, you do one on one, so at least there's more time to like teach you how to do it. But luckily, I did see her work, and I was obviously just scared to death. And but she did make it look easy. And it just comes over time. Now you know, once you get quicker at dubbing, it, it comes pretty naturally if the writing is good. Uh, if the writing's bad, you have to kind of adjust it. Not bad, just not written to the mouth flap. <laughs> so then you adjust it. But a lot, you know, so. Recording alone is, is a weird thing because if there's no one else already recorded, you don't know what you're reacting to and hopefully you go back in if, there, if something's way off. Do you ever have the opportunity to record with other people or is it mostly...? It depends what it is, but like Generator Rex was a group record. Scooby-Doo, we got to do some things together. Um, Scooby-Doo. Uh, a couple shows, but anime really real. Barbie, we got to do group records. Barbie Life in the Dream House. That was super fun. Yeah. Because just a bunch of high-pitched girls in a room. What's better than that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so that was super fun. Like, there was a record for Barbie once. I think there were like 20 of us recording. I mean, that was, there were men and women at that one, but it's awesome too because it's like a class, it's like a master class for me. You know, I'm watching, I'm like, oh, that's a really cool technique they're using or I wouldn't have read it like that. I should think more outside the box about how I read things, and because obviously we can all still learn things. So, yeah. Um, I heard I heard that one of I heard that one of the best things about recording like original animation relay is that you get to ad lib a lot more than you would with anime. I, I heard that. Oh, without a doubt, you say yeah, with, with any, it's any. called prelay if if the animation is not already done, mm -hmm. and um, we get to ad lib and make up stuff because and, you're not locked into the lip flap. Any fun stories about anything? I mean, there's always dirty outtakes, but that's anyway. Yeah. I don't have any great stories, but I mean, obviously, with Generator Rex working with John DiMaggio, someone who's a master at that. So, also with anime, if your character is off screen, you can ad lib a little bit. Yeah. So that's fun because all of a sudden you're like, because the way an anime script is marked, our line is underlined if they're not on screen. So when I see an underline coming up, I'm so excited because it means I have all this freedom. Like I'm about to have freedom and I can, I can switch a word or two if it just sounds, if it rolls off my tongue better or if I wanna put an ugh in front of something or oh in front of something, I can do that. And sometimes it needs that. So an underline in an anime script is like a big green light. Oh, someone's trying to break in. Yes, sir. When you get to do those off-screen voices, yeah. can you ever like talk with the voice director and be like, well, do you think this line would be okay? I mean, if it's this character, do you ever get to put in like your own line there? Or is it always sometimes, some because Yeah, sometimes we do. Um, I mean, our writers are pretty good. Like, I'm trying, like, Sailor Moon, they're always pretty good, but sometimes something just... <laughs> it's strict Something her. strikes you, and you're like, oh, this... I think this character would, wouldn't be so formal. Or... It's usually about how formal a line is. Like, if I can like put an apostrophe in something, like, like you are going to the store now. I'm like, she'd say you're going to the store now. But if I need it to be, you are going to the store now. Like, so a lot of times it's just making something more casual, especially if it's a young character who wouldn't be speaking very formally. Or 
So yeah, that's that's the best is when it gets collaborative. Yeah. And I always found it funny that it's more so the when they dub anime in Europe or America, they do it so much better more often, especially when it comes to video games. Like if you ever play Japanese import video games and when they find when they dub them over, the dub almost matches with the mouth, where the original is like all over the place. It never fits. Isn't that interesting since that is the original language? I don't know why that is. I wish I had an answer for you. I know there is a new trend too where they're animating in English and then for a project that's really only going to be seen overseas and I don't understand that trend really, but I'm sure it's a financial thing. I don't know. Um, but it's also what the consumer is used to and what the consumer demands. So you guys are used to seeing a lot of really good original animation with really good lip like matching and so you'd probably be mad if it didn't look good. Maybe they are, they, they're used to it and it's a stylistic thing. I'm, I'm making this up, but it's what you're used to. So if you're saying they're all like that. As, especially with video games. A lot of the time in anime, but video games, it's like a sore thumb. It sticks out completely. So do you prefer playing your video games dubs or subs? It depends. <laughs> What like, about you guys? Does anyone be have a preference? If it's something really complicated and it's short sure enough, like Danganronpa, where I can play it again and again, it's like I'll play it first in dub, so I oh, don't so you have do both. to okay. do it the whole time. And then do a lot of you I'll guys do both, both? Yeah. for games both. or anime? English where I can. If it's yeah. not, then you know. If it's good enough, too. Because <laughs> some dubs are just so. Uh, and sometimes yeah, they're great. Can't, sometimes can't they're better. Because like some people, people I know are purists. Oh, yeah. Well, certainly, almost everyone prefers DVZ in English. Even a lot of the people in Japan prefer it in English. Really? Because it used in the old days, people were such purists. When I first started, they would get upset that it was even dubbed at all. <laughs> you know? Well, there's that. It depends on the series. It's like how long it's been around. Right. Uh, what about redubs? How do you guys feel about redubs? Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends how good it is, right? Mm. Any strong? No strong opinions What's about that. Which one? Oh, like Sailor Moon. Like, I was going to say Sailor Moon's being redubbed, and Stephanie Shea's doing it, and she's amazing. But obviously or, there's people that grew up, you know, so I think it's all just what your preference yeah. is. But I love it because it gives a new, like, I worked on One Piece, which is a point of contention for a lot of people because I didn't know that I was part of a, a show that people hated. Like, I had no idea until I started doing conventions. They're like, what was it like to be part of the really bad One Piece? And I was like, uh -oh. I don't know, I liked it. But it's fine. I'm not, please, I don't write it. I'm good. I'm, you know, I yeah, did my job. Not, that's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, the four kids, all the voice actors are terrible. It's like, no, they're not. The voice director. Well, of also, four we were. Kids it's it's, these it's weird who your audience lines. is. When it's airing on a Saturday morning, you yeah. have different. It's it's a different audience. So yeah. we played for that audience, and so I mean, I don't get offended because I'm whatever. But it's fun to hear. The, it's fun to hear people get worked up about it. You should. It's your entertainment. You should get worked up. I get worked up when I like something or don't like something. So, I like hearing all the feedback. Yeah. Uh, Kaya and no, no, oh my God, Nojika. Nojika is that her name? I signed yeah, it this it. morning. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, look. For me, it was a fun job. I love yeah. doing it. And anything with pirates, I'm there. Um, <laughs> but. Again, like it's open for interpretation, and that's what's fun about this stuff. So it is funny when people do get excited over it, and and they're or they're afraid to tell me that they didn't. I'm like, tell me whatever. I'm please, I'll tell you right back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, you were, I believe, you were out of anime for a little while. You know, after uh, like probably around 2009, right. where the world could crash, unfortunately. When I moved. Yeah. 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 Okay. But how was, how was it like being back and doing things like video games? Yeah, I did take a big break. I, Because I was working for four kids in New York for a long time. And then I moved, I started doing the cart Fridays. So that's really when I took my break from, from anime. Um, and then I started doing audiobooks. And that kind of took over my life. So within the past like year or so, I got back into it. And it's so much fun. Because I get to work with humans again. Because <laughs> I was, audiobooks, you really are very isolated. Um, and it's been, I've been reunited with all like with all these great people like Eric Stewart and I have like five conventions together this year Veronica Taylor like I'm seeing all my old friends um, engineers everybody you know and I really missed it I re like I wish I could tell you some of the stuff I'm working on now but it's top secret uh -oh. but um no spoilers no oh, god I wish I could say one of them but uh, getting back in the in the anime booth has been awesome so thank you for asking that according to Wiki you're in God Eater. Yeah. Awesome. 
Sweet. Uh, I'm glad that God you're Eater, yeah, that, I, that is one I'm allowed to talk about. God Eater 2, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Maybe one, I don't know. Also, the, it's cool. the other that, thing. That's another redub, actually. Yeah. So well, it'll, that's another one. It'll be interesting to see if people hate me. The first game, we <laughs> know, the, second okay, wait. Game, the second game we never got in the first place. So you're totally new. No, one of the. Well, yeah, the first I don't know what I'm allowed to say, so okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You don't I don't want to get one fired. I'll take the second question then. Okay. The, um, a few of the New York actors from the old four kids yeah. of, of One Piece are now have been on the new one in various parts. Would you like to? Would you like to? You know, join that sometime? Of course. Awesome. I think that's in Texas, <laughs> though. Yeah, yeah. Fine. But so, some people like Mike, uh, Sean Shemmel. Because they go to Texas a lot, those mm -hmm. guys. Because Sean is from Texas, um, and Mike visits there a lot. So, like people like, <coughs> sorry if you don't know, it's Michael Center Nicholas and Sean Shemmel. Um, so Funimation would be an amazing place to work if I was in Texas, so. <laughs> it's only a plane flight away. It's only a plane. I mean, look, if they invite me, I'm there. Yeah, yeah there's a ton. They're, they're doing I'd work on Pokemon again. They're, they're doing that a lot. They're, they're, they're flying LA actors over to do some dubs in Funimation. Yeah, they do it if they have like a big, a big chunk for them to do, they go back. But even Pokemon, someone asked me recently would I go back, and I actually just spoke to the director, and I said, next time I'm in New York, I'm there. I mean, I don't, you know, people are like, do you have any, because it, it switched companies and all that. Like a job's a job, and it's a fun job. So why wouldn't they do it? <laughs> exactly. I love the storyline. I love. I mean, I was just hanging with the new cast. They're awesome. I would love there to be some like great, like, rumor we could start about us all hating each other, but there's not. <laughs> we could totally <laughs> start it right now. That would be fun. Like, because I love the gossip of all that, but unfortunately, I have no dirt on any of them. Should I start a rumor now? Yeah. This is that time. haven. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, they're all really cool, and we all get along, so there's enough work for all of us. Do you have to? I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, and I get this a lot, so her daughter's interested in, in working in either voiceover or anime or somewhere behind the scenes. And as silly as this sounds, it's, well, first of all, I got in in a very direct way. I, I live near New York City, I, my story is boring because it's not, it doesn't pertain to today's actors. Today, you can live anywhere and get into a job like this because technology has made it so that you can buy a $50 microphone and start doing auditions. Obviously, you have to get better equipment if you start working, and but and this is so not a blow up at all because people ask me this and I say, Google how to get into voiceovers, and you will find more information than you know what to do with. Like it is because voiceover actors, for the most part, are really generous and love their jobs and do love talking about how to get into it. And Erin Fitzgerald is a is a voiceover actress who just wrote an amazing book. I think it's called 10 Things Any Voiceover Actor Will Tell You. And it's a, a how-to guide. You can take classes over Skype with voiceover actors and, and teachers. Uh, there are all sorts of sites that have, some of them you have to pay to be part of, but where you can just do auditions. And you're pretty or not, use a fake name if you're embarrassed at first, and just start doing auditions, because the more you do them, like when I, if I have if I have a ton of auditions at, like on my computer that I have to do, I'll do the ones I don't care about as much at first, just to start warming up, <laughs> because it's a numbers game and it's a warming up your voice game. And if someone is is interested in doing it, there's just all these avenues now to take. I mean, I Eric Stewart will tell you he got started in it because he was like an intern at a recording studio, so just be be around it, <laughs> you know, be part of a creative scene and just you'll figure out exactly what avenue is right for you, but. There are, there's so much information. It's overwhelming probably how much information there is, but Erin's book actually is because there's so much information. So she whittles it down. But it's it's so doable from wherever you are, which is bad for me, but good for everyone else. <laughs> I was gonna ask kind of an interesting question. So you know there's such thing as method acting, yes. you know, in, in, in the world. Stanislavski. So, <laughs> is there such thing as, like if someone's in the studio recording a voice, does anyone ever stay in the voice even out of takes when they're not doing a take? Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, you know what's interesting about that is, is when you're at voice acting, this is, it is a, sort of an answer. When I'm acting, I want to use my whole body. When I'm in front of a microphone, I can't 
move my whole body or the sound will be messed up. So I really <coughs> train myself to not be as physical when I work. And when I try to work on camera now, I find that it's a weird adjustment. So I think it's, the method is, is to want, but I don't know anyone who stays in voice. <laughs> Although that would be the funniest thing. No, I'm like picturing, like who would I like to see? I mean, Nancy Cartwright's here, you can ask her that. Oh, yeah, She'd be a good true. one to ask that. If she just talks like Bart all day, <laughs> I would. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would guess that if it's a hard voice for you to do, or if it's an accent, like, I do a lot of audiobooks where I narrate as a southern narrator. And I won't intentionally stay in it, like when I'm going to lunch, but it slips in. And I'm like, can I get a turkey sandwich? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that, like, where are you from? You're like, New York. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So I think sometimes, at, even sometimes I think, not that I'm going to slip into like Bulbasaur, but because that would be so weird. Can I get a turkey sandwich? Oh, sorry. Um, but sometimes I think we, if I've been doing a character, I, a word or two will come out and I'm like, oh, I'm a crazy person. I just became crazy. Yeah. But it would be fun to see someone like a Daniel Day-Lewis who stays in like his Abe Lincoln character right, all day. Right, because he does that. Like, stay. And Jared Leto, I hear as well. Oh, see, that would be so funny if, if one of us just really did that. <laughs> I want to dare someone to do it one day, just to freak everyone out. Or maybe you start doing it. I just start doing it. Well, I just did a show where I can't talk about really, but where I was a cat. So the big joke was like, and my friend on the show was a deer. So our big joke was that we bought like funny costumes to come in and, and pretend that we were method acting one day. And we never got to do it, but we were like, I was like, I'm gonna come in with a full binder of cat research and like pretend I got really into it. <laughs> and he's like, and he got this like, well, I won't get into it, but, but we were totally prepared to just mess with everyone and take it like insanely seriously. But yeah, it'd be fun if I was just like, <laughs> like, how are you doing? Sorry, start at the convention, that. yeah. Totally and only we will know what's happening and everyone else will be like, hey, did you see the cat lady? Be like, <laughs> she's weird. Great. Guys, go to attention, <laughs> she's really weird. That's a good question. That's funny. I've never thought about that. No, me neither. Any other questions? Or at it? Any other impressions? Or what else we got? Yeah, what do you guys want to talk about? Yes, sir. It says that you worked in Sonic X, but it doesn't say I did. who you did. I don't know who I was in that, though. Isn't that strange? I, I must have been there, but sometimes we just do incidental background stuff. So that's what I'm guessing I did on that. Yeah, it says you were there Additional voices. Additional voices. What does it say I was? It says that you were in Sonic X. See, and this is the problem. When we did these shows, there was no IMDb, there was no Twitter, there was like, no Wikipedia. we weren't keeping track of it. Like literally I would go, when we, in the old days, we'd go to four kids and go from room to room to room and no one was writing down what we did, which is so crazy. And it's, now it's so long ago that I'd have to hear it, honestly, which is, so, it's such a bad answer and I'm sorry that it's a terrible answer. But it, it's not like that anymore. Like, I don't like what old. Um, th that's sort of what it was back in the day. And so obviously since then, I, make a, I go into a studio session, I write down everything I did that day. Because sometimes it's like, be woman number three, blah, blah, blah. And like, but I just want to be able to answer people now. Because I feel so crappy that I can't tell you. <laughs> so that is the worst answer ever. I'm so sorry. Make it up. I know I was around when it was going on, so it's very likely. <laughs> <laughs> that I walked into that room and did some silly voices. I like that you guys are researching while you're sitting here. <laughs> yes. So, so there, so there was an old New York dub that I watched that I watched when I was younger. It was, it was this an old show called Pat Labor. Oh yeah, I remember that. Well, wait, what do you think of that show? I think it was really neat. You know, cop, cops and giant robots. Yeah, I remember. I remember really liking it. I don't remember who I was, but if you said it, I probably would. Um, who, what, who you were? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, unfortunately, I never, I never got to. But there are some old shows like that that are making comebacks that like people are rediscovering now because of all these great venues, avenues, and so like a show like Pat Labor, like that's why I like coming to these things too because you've reminded me, and maybe now I'll dig it up and watch it, or you guys tell each other what to watch. Like now that he said it, someone else will discover it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, like there was a show called Shamanic Princess that someone brought me a poster of the other day to sign. And I was like, this was a great show. I totally forgot about this. A show called Fighting Foodons, which was hilarious. I that remember seeing that 
on Fox Fox way back when. Fighting for Dogs was ridiculous. Like it could be an Adult Swim show now, probably. Like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that again, like, that didn't see. exist yet. So like, there's all these shows that are finding a new life that that you guys are finding or we're reminding you of. Or I mean, there's just I mean, there's too many things to watch in a day. But that's a yeah, Pat Labor for sure. I remember really liking that show. <laughs> Any other Anybody questions? Else? Come on, guys. Don't Comments, be shy. Comments, concerns. We can talk about you guys if you want. Yeah. Who lives in Miami? Almost all of you. Where'd you drive in from? Me? You guys. You didn't raise your hand. From uh, the West Coast Naples. Oh, okay. It's only about, what, an hour and a half? Two hours-ish? Nice. It's really beautiful. Have you ever been to Naples? No. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now I gotta go to Naples. See, I gotta go. I come to these things and I like, have a list of things to buy and do and see. Close at seven? Somebody yeah, close at seven in Naples? You know, they, they say, you know, the old people live in Tampa and their parents live in Naples. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I fit right in because I'm like an early bird. Yeah, if you're I like a four o'clock dinner. It's, it's the country club and this is the nightclub side of the city. That's the country club side. Are you guys partying while you're here? I am not a partier. This city's crazy. Yeah? She's like, yeah, I'm partying. Is there any good cosplay here today? Let's see. Who's dressed up? You guys, just you guys. Where's your cosplay at? As volunteers, well, you have to wear those shirts so you get off the hook. Any more questions? We, I'll let you guys go do your thing if you're out of questions. Well, anything else you want to plug? I know there's a lot of things you said you can't tell us. Anything you can tell us? Yes, Gundam, well, Gundam Thunderbolt was the one I was going to talk about. And the other film, I, I got to do a Studio Ghibli film this year. That's awesome. But we don't get to know which one. No, you do. Oh, we do. So it was out, it's called Only Yesterday. And it stars Daisy Ridley. I don't know if you guys have heard of Days of Ridley. <laughs> and um, the cool thing about that is I asked the casting director, I'm like, how did you get Daisy Ridley? And he said, she's a huge Studio Ghibli fan, and she approached them about doing a project with them. That's amazing. So I love hearing that, and she's great in it. And it's this, I play a lot of incidental characters. Like, anytime you see a bunch of little kids, you can hear me yelling ridiculous things. Uh, but it's such a lovely studio. And it was a movie from 20 years ago that they just finally dubbed. And it's out. I believe this month on DVD. It was played in limited release. And it's obvious, it's Ghibli, it's great. Um, but that I get to talk about, so that was super fun, and I definitely recommend it. There's some uncomfortable parts, like, in a good way, you know, because it's like a coming of age story, and it might make you squirm and, like, feel weird, but that's awesome. You know, it has, it has depth, it's, yeah. Which, which, How much do you get paid for working on audio books? Ooh, I can't answer audio. How much are you there working on audio books? Not enough. Um, I can't really answer that, um, but oh, okay. I feel weird talking about my money. Um, I will say it's one of the hardest jobs and not the highest paying in, in voiceover, but it's really rewarding when you work on an amazing book. How about a, a different question? How long does it take to record an audiobook? That's a good question. So the rule of thumb for an audiobook recording is if the book is 10 hours, it probably took me at least 20 hours to record. It's about double because you got to prep the book, you make a ton of mistakes because try. People say if people ask me if they want to like they want to do audiobooks, they say sit in a closet for six hours and read out loud. And every time you make a mistake, start the sentence again. And then just if you still want to do audiobooks, I'll tell you everything you want to know about it. <laughs> so that's sort of the rule of thumb of audiobooks. Yeah, it's about double. Easy. Yeah, it's really labor intensive. Yeah. Audiobooks are always done by just one person, right? They don't have multi There's a lot of multicast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, it's becoming it's becoming more popular. There's a company that does a lot of graphic novel audiobooks with multicast. Um, I know Penguin Random House is doing a lot more multicast now. But usually it's just me doing every single voice. But um, it is a it's a new trend in audiobooks to have bigger casts, which is really cool. Yeah. We started our own book series, and we eventually want to do an audio book, and we've got, like, as far as all, fif all 15 books that he's written up so far, we only have one published, but there's over 200 characters in it. Well, so a great, we a want to have multiple, have one person play multiple people, obviously. Well, and the, the truth is, with audiobooks, I don't know if you guys listen to them, it's not people fully becoming the characters, it's people right. um, indicating the characters. So they'll just change, you know, they, no one expects me to become a 60-year-old man. They want me to indicate it, that. They want me to slow my pacing down. They want me to deepen my voice a little bit without it being cartoony, because you don't want to get cartoony in an audiobook. 
Um, but there's a great site called ACX. You should check out if you want to self-publish an audiobook. ACX.com. It's owned by Amazon and Audible. But that's where self-published authors go to self-publish their audiobooks. Awesome. Yeah. So where can we follow you on social media? Oh, my gosh. All my social media. Uh, Tara Sands LA. I try to keep up with it. I'm getting better. I, I was following it. Yeah, I saw you on Instagram. I, just, I saw you on Twitter. Literally last week I got better about posting because <laughs> people told me I had to. Um, Tara Sands LA is uh, Instagram and Twitter, and then I think it's Tara Sands Tara Sands on Facebook. So follow me. I'll write back and stuff. I will, I swear. And are you going to your booth now? Can people get autographs, photos? When can we see tomorrow. you again? Tomorrow. Um, I think at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Today I have some Twitch things. Oh, that's cool. Twitch is like a site? Is that what that is? It's like live streaming? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm so bad. Who can explain Twitch to Someone us? Someone explain Twitch to me. Yeah. Basically all it is is uh, live streaming for various, games. Yeah, live streaming for, uh, for games. For games. Oh, awesome. Games. So that's fun. Oh, that'll be fun. I do that now. So yeah, tomorrow too, and I'm a free signer, so if you bring me something, I can sign the first uh, one or two for free, and then I have a bunch of junk eaten back. And then we have Pokemon panel tomorrow. But... We have Pokemon panel for the next like three days. That's awesome. Well, I get a moderator. With, with like the whole, with all of us, so that's more fun than just me. Yeah. Um. No, but I'll take it. <laughs> I see it. That's not what she said. I get the weirdest people, like I get such a weird mix of people that I look like that don't look at all like each other. Like Amy Bowler, I'll take. I get Giada sometimes. I'm like, I'll take that. Amy, I've heard like once before. Claire Forlani, I used to get. I don't know. I think I look the good my ones. Hey, I'll take the good ones. Spike Lee, I get a lot now. <laughs> Just like no. Um, cool. <laughs> It's a good note to end on, a nice yeah. compliment. And I look like Amy Poehler. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see yeah. you guys soon. Hope you have a good rest of the weekend right here at Florida Supercon! <laughs>